folks, today we're going to talk about the big box expansion uh, for Windward. I'm going to take everything out of the original box, uh, combine it with the new stuff in this box, and put it all together. And we're going to come back at the end and talk a little bit about this game, its new expansions, and our initial thoughts after playing it one time. All right, so here is a little size comparison to get us started. Uh, of course, the original Windward box is much, much smaller. And uh, we're going to take the contents of that and swap them into here in just a second. But let's take a look at what's inside. Looks like we've got a couple of boards here with some, uh, some punch-out boards and a little message there from the manufacturer. We've also got the Automa board and the One Versus All board. They've redone the instructions. There's actually a different material on the outside, so if... <laughs> And there's a, the artwork and other things are slightly different on this. It looks like it's laid out a little bit better. I can't say I've had a chance to read every single thing that we see there. But uh, there is like a different texture to the outside of it. It's kind of like that windward style textured paper. So you can tell a big difference between that and the original. Of course, we've got little vacuum form trays here for all the ships. And uh, then more, still more vacuum trays everywhere you look in here. We've got uh, the new replacement miniatures. Uh, we've got some little components to, to put together and stuff. Uh, we're going to be mixing these, like, different parts of the stands and things from the old one with the new one. Uh, we've got the blue cruster and this uh, uh, octopus-looking thing. Uh, I ordered some extra red dice, and I got the addition that has the metal coins, which I think are super cool, little treasure tokens. We also have uh, a tray uh, trays for all the different components. Uh, the card tray is probably my favorite. There's actually a whole other set of cards, and, uh, and a, there's some more event cards and stuff too. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, inside of here, we've got... A few more things. We've got all the scout ships. Uh, the scout ships are a little separate board on the side of the original one. So we've got all of those. There's like six of those in there. And then we've also got the raider ship that can change the different levels on its own. And that's it for the box. Uh, at this point, it's time to start putting things back. Now I'm going to start with the speed dial and then the scout ships here on the bottom. I'm also going to do all the different ship boards and put them there. Then we're also going to put the dice, all the dice fit, and the wind dice. Uh, they all fit there in this little slot on the side. I wanted to tell you, too, that you could take that Automa board, that Automa one versus all board, and go ahead and stick it in here, too. Didn't discover that till later. <laughs> one thing I'm really happy about is that the game board fits in there just fine. It doesn't have to be wedged in there in a weird way. Uh, the fully assembled trading post and the black market fit in there too and we've got room for all the red cresters here i think there's two different poses but they're really easy to figure out uh, which one goes where you're gonna have to add a medium stand to that black market uh, just so you know uh, then the card stand fits right there on top uh, there's a whole new set of cards I, I took my sleeved cards and the new set and was able to fit them all in there so i think uh, there's no question that there's plenty of room for for your sleeved cards and that was kind of an issue before uh, i took all the little uh all the different jobs that i put them there the little extra people that you can hire and i noticed that uh this little tracker thing was just like about a centimeter about a centimeter too big and what I did with these is I just took like a regular hobby file and I kind of worked on either side of these. It took me, uh, I, of course, I'm going to greatly speed it up for you guys, <laughs> but it took me about, oh, uh, about a minute and a half or so to make these fit. And uh, I got them to fit. I mean, it was so close, guys. I got them both to fit just fine. And as you'll see, there's absolutely no damage in it whatsoever. It's just about a centimeter, just about a centimeter too long. Now, I've seen people talking about it in the comments and stuff and how disappointed they are. Well, take a little bit of a hobby file and just file it down, and that'll fit just fine. Uh, there's plenty of room for all the different types of cards and st stuff. I, oh, and even if you don't file that down, it will fit in there just fine. Uh, there's another tray here that's got uh, room for all your little gray crusters. And uh, it's also going to have uh, a place for the drift tiles, 
which are the little uh, debris fields that you have to avoid, and the white cresters there. I haven't played with the white cresters very often. I need to, I'm really excited to do that. There's an alternate pose that came with this box. Uh, there's a place for the blue crester and uh, the, the, the Kraken thing. Oh, the cow door. I, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> this has a plastic lid too. Uh, this is the black market tray. There's a little board that fits in there. And you can fit all of the gold pieces, the paper ones and the metal ones in there together. There's plenty of room. And uh, there's a little contracts card area. I discovered later that there's this little uh, this little job here that only the raider can hire these two these two character types. So I decided to stick that in the black market just to kind of keep it on its own. I transferred all the tokens, uh, all the different types of tokens, into these trays. There's more than enough room. There's definitely more than enough room to put that out, and it makes it super easy. Just pull these things out and set them down, and you're ready to game. And there's lids for all those too. Here's a comparison between the two ships. The one with the yellow sails is what they look like now. Uh, you will have to transfer over your uh, flying bases for most of these things. Uh, the scout, I think, had a, they had bases for that. Uh, there's and then there's little spaces for all the different little elements. Here's a comparison of the new scout or the new longboat and the old longboat. You see, the old one just had a, like an ink wash, and this one's painted up a little bit more. You're going to have to take the little flying bases off all the uh, old ones. And you're kind of left with a bunch of, I don't know, a bunch of boats that you can't use. Or maybe you could use them in another game someplace else. But uh, there there was quite a bit of replacement as far as like those components go. There's room for everything. Uh, the Raider has a, has a little bit different layout. There's actually one more little ship across the bottom that I'm showing here. Because it had fallen under the couch when I did this video. <laughs> But it, it has a little bit different loadout. It doesn't have like the, the same, like it doesn't have long boats or anything like the other one does. Now I chose to put my little rings across the top of this and then the rule books on top of everything else. And uh, then I'm going to give it the old turn test, kind of rotate it around and see how bad it looks in here afterwards. It seemed to do okay. I was a little skeptical because there's no plastic for the top of this uh of all these ships here, I did have a component or two uh, migrate its way around, but I'd say overall it did really good. I know all the other stuff with uh, with plastic on it's going to be fine, so uh, that's mainly what I was curious about. And it's super easy just to kind of lay those rule books down and kind of make a little bit of a lid on the top there to kind of uh, help guide things into place. I noticed the cardboard on this box was very, very good quality. It's a very sturdy box. The vacuum formed expansions and a nice sturdy box really make this the premium version of a game I already loved. I think one of my favorite elements of the of the new tray or is the marketplace. I really like it. Uh, I like that they did this. They did this number where they have it like a divot here at the bottom, and what that enables you to do. So when you want to pick something, you can kind of press in and knocks all the rest of these up. So they're really easy to pick up. They did the same thing too with the cards. So if you want to choose a card you don't have to kind of like I mean maybe it wouldn't be so hard to ch kind of choose from there but they also have uh, that same little indention in the back I don't know if it, maybe it'd be easier to see over here yeah so they have this indention here so when you go to choose a card you can kind of just press down on any side and it lifts it up a little bit makes it just that much e easier to pull these out and uh, I thought that that was a really good idea the other thing that this tray has is a discard area. So as you use these things, you can put them here. And when you're not using it, you can take your player aids and your achievements and all the other cards that would kind of fit in here. Uh, you can lay them like this. I, I, I rubber band them up so that uh, I can easily like separate them from the rest of these. So you can lay them like this or you can put them in here in the discard and uh, throw the top on this and it's ready to go back. So as you can see, the big box expansion really adds a lot to the game. A lot of different elements that uh, uh, add more strategy to this to this game. A little bit more depth, probably quite a bit more depth. Oh yeah. The other thing that makes this really interesting is it's very much uh, a pull out of the box and play with the vacuum formed uh, trays and stuff that they've mm -hmm. come up with. I feel I feel like that makes it a, a really interesting. 
it, it makes the board look a little bit neater than it did before because it was just kind of laying cards out on cardboard and stuff but mm. now they've got everything's kind of got its place yeah definitely added more um depth to the game more things to accomplish besides just in getting cresters so one thing that did with this game is they've made it so that you can play a bit longer uh they've uh made it so you can go like up to 45 and they put the points track around the perimeter of uh of the board now Just what's nice. what's smart about this is i remember before when we played if you accidentally knocked the board you had a tendency to <laughs> knock all the all Everything. the little pizza <laughs> wedges away from each other and this ring actually kind of corrals it they still move a little bit inside of here but yeah. it sort of corrals it so that you don't have too much of a problem with uh, accidentally knocking your pizza wedges around uh, I liked keeping score around here felt a lot more natural than just kind of having mm -hmm. something going over there and it kind of made it so it, you've got a little 15 point tracker and you've got uh, things marked at 15 20 30 and then it goes all the way to 45 so depending on how long a game you wanted to play you could uh, make adjustments and actually play uh, different game lengths and I would imagine it would be better like for if you had more people to do the lesser goal like 15 20 points and then with just two people we could have easily gone 20 to 30 points and yeah with had more time to do stuff or even 45 so if you really wanted to explore like working contracts from the black market or maybe summoning the Kulkra and fighting it for the nine uh, victory points you can certainly do that and but I, I feel like you'd have to have a longer game to really pursue some of these other elements. Yeah. That yeah. It seemed, so I think... Because we didn't even do the achievements. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we didn't even uh, do the achievements. I, I put out, I always put out the optional achievements and stuff when I play, but I think that's a great thing about this game, uh, being versatile. Like, it still felt like a good game at 15 points mm -hmm. but if you wanted to and if that felt like it ended too soon you could definitely add more points in and, and play uh, for different things there's a lot of different there's a lot of stuff in windward even with just the original version that we never really got to mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of co uh, cooperative ways to play which we've never done. never done it's a very fun competitive game i haven't tried it cooperatively or anything and of course we haven't tried everything that comes up uh, yeah. Another thing that they added is events. So, so every round, uh, one of these cards will come up, and you'll have a random event. Uh, like this one says, engine failure. Ships may only use wind to move, so you wouldn't be yeah. able to. <laughs> <laughs> that so, would have been challenging. Yeah. So the, there are all kinds of little challenging uh, things that can happen. I think some of these help you, and some of them hurt you. Um, Another little thing that, that's just kind of fun that they added was this tracker to help keep track of your, your movement because you can move and then you start doing other stuff and maybe you'd forget. Mm -hmm. I think in the past they said to use the wind die to yeah. kind of remember where you're at. Uh, they added a couple of extra dice uh, and I also bought the extra red dice and now there's plenty of dice. That was another uh, mm -hmm. uh, criticism I had about the other, uh, the previous version of this game. They have these... Uh, these little metal coins, I think, are great. Yeah. Uh, these little measure, metal treasure coins are fun. Additional kind of thing that they've added. Uh, I love that they have these little trays uh, for all the tokens and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Although these seem kind of big for what for the stuff that they're holding. And there's a lot of there's they they gave us two sets of them. So, but again, that's handy for like just pull it out of the box and play it. Mm -hmm. You can take the whole marketplace. You can take the whole marketplace, throw the plastic over the top of it, and put it in the box just as it is, and it's ready to go for the next game. And that's that just makes these things easy, easy to play for mm -hmm. me. I, I I really the the setup is kind of daunting for a lot of these games. One, you kind of maybe uh, if you haven't played in a while, you're already going to have to read the rules and <laughs> how to set it up. And it's so much easier if you're not sorting through a bunch of cards and putting these cards over there and mm -hmm. those cards over there. Everything's kind of where it needs to be. You pick your color ship and you set the map up and you go. Yeah. I think the biggest difference with this expansion is the scout ships. And we definitely got to play with those. They, they fly yeah. around at a higher level and they add this uh, element of uncovering things that are in these drift tiles. 
that was really fun to me. I yeah, like I like discovering fun. things and going and picking it up, and it can kind of ferry those uh, those things that it finds. Of course, you can find any number of different things under these th tiles, like gas, uh, treasures, even another crester could just pop out. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of different things to, to be discovered, and we didn't use. There's a lot of tiles too. Like we didn't even mm -hmm. use half of the tiles mm -hmm. just in this game. Now we have it set on a two-player side so if it seems like the map's really small it's this is for two players or three players if you want to make a super challenging three player game they say mm -hmm. you can keep it the map really tight i also got the neoprene mat which is really neat now what the neoprene mat is is the other side of this so it's going to be the bigger version of the map but what it doesn't have are any of the drift tiles these little tiles with debris on it uh, so you can add those any way you like and with these maps, you can kind of move these little pizza slices around different ways to kind of have different, have your debris in different spots. But with the neoprene, you just, uh, you just set it up however you want. So that's kind of a, a, another way to play. I'm really happy with what they've done. I, and I'm really grateful that they were able to get this, this finished. There was a lot of, uh, there are a lot of issues getting this actually manufactured and then back. And, uh, and some of the stuff they did really didn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not sure that the boats look better. Uh, I do like what they did, but um, yeah, it's kind of it's, it's kind of strange that they spent like all that attention like making the longboats look prettier, but then these things look kind of plain compared, you know, in comparison. Like the little scout ships seem kind of plain. I like the look of them and I like the way they play and stuff. But I was wondering why they why they made the longboats look so much prettier, but the, they really didn't do the same on the mm -hmm. scout ships. The big box version of this game feels like what they maybe intended to do all along. Like this yeah. feels like what like they finished the game, and mm -hmm. uh, I, I I really 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 like this game. With I liked it before a lot with the expansion and all this extra stuff. I like it even more. I feel like it, it makes it a more exciting game because there's like so many different things you can do. Uh, definitely, if, if you were playing this a lot and it felt like the same game after a while, this will definitely mix it up. It adds so many little like little things and you can add the parts of it that you want or the parts or leave off parts that you don't want. So if you don't want to play with the black market, you can just not use it. And that's that's the same way with like I guess any expansion, but mm -hmm. this this offers uh, this expansion offers mm -hmm. another seven or eight different things that you can do that you couldn't do with a base game, and really uh, adds to the game and makes makes it deeper and it doesn't doesn't make it overly complicated. We implemented like three or four things and it it really wasn't bad at all. We had a lot of fun with the base game though, um, or I did. <laughs> yeah. It was a good uh, way to get uh, acquainted with the game, and then now adding the elements was easy. Well, and the base game for this, uh, I think the really fun part of the base game for this is is right at the end, where you're you're scrambling to get all of the points you can, and then get back to port and stuff. Yeah, because it's close. Usually, it's pretty close between because we play two player and three player, and it's always. Um, you know, is someone going to come out behind you and really make it happen to get uh, the extra points to beat you? And because uh, it's always, it's not always clear cut that someone's going to win. And uh, that's what I, it's kind of fun competition that way. I don't think we've ever played this game with more than four people, uh, although apparently it can go up higher than that. Yeah, I think we've just played with three. So. Uh, it would be really interesting. So we haven't had a lot of ship-to-ship -ship interaction. We don't fight each other a whole lot, even mm -hmm. though you can. We're not playing cooperatively, but there's, yeah. if, if, if that's a problem in your household, <laughs> you know, if, if people might get upset when you attack, you can totally play this game without attacking each other. You can still be cutthroat. You can steal their gas out from under them. Uh, you, you can wait till a crester, they roll really bad and a crester rolls <laughs> over the ship and busts it up and go take all their stuff that they've left behind. There's all yeah, kinds of other ways. <laughs> He's got a lot of girls in here that'll get mad. <laughs> if, <laughs> like me and my daughter is what I mean by that. <laughs> but uh, we get very angry if he uh, comes steal our stuff and stuff. But yeah. We have other ways to get back at him. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I don't I don't generally di directly attack. I try to I try to outmaneuver uh, to win, and that yeah. seems to give me a little less grief. But that's all I got for this one. Uh, it's a really fun expansion. I'm I'm super happy that it, it was made and that it's out in the world. If you want one, I think about getting one pretty soon. I I'm not sure that there'll ever be a reprint of this. They had so much trouble getting this one out, and I and I hope that they are able to succeed and continue. And I I really do, but uh, I'm not sure that there'll be a lot of these boxes around. Uh, this I think they were lucky to get it here, and I'm I'm grateful mm -hmm. that they did. That's all I got for this week. Thank you for tuning in. Holly and I wish you the best of luck with your games. We'll see you soon. Bye.